Now, why is it that God says their hand must be cut off? Because I want you to now read very attentively. If you read the Old Testament, one of the most important things for the perfect. No, oh. okay. now the thing is, these laws that we find here are, according to you, laws that God ordained for the people of Israel, right? So that's the same God. That's Jesus ordaining these laws. And when you look at a law like this here, if two men fight together, and the wife of one draws near to rescue her husband from the hand of the one attacking him, and puts out her hand and seizes the seizes him by the genitals. All right, then you shall cut off her hand and your eyes shall not pity her. Do you understand the context there? Two men get in a fight, the wife of one tries to help her husband, you have to cut off her hand and you can't pity her. You think that's just? That was the law. That was, so you think that's that was, justice? That was the rule for them in their and time. Did Jesus ordain that law? You base your basis on understanding things from the Bible. If two men fight together and the wife of one of them draws near to rescue the husband from the hand of the one attacking him, all right, and puts out her hand and seizes the man attacking by the, by the genitals, you shall cut off her hand, your eye shall not pity her. Do you think this is from God? If, if a man gets in a fight with another man, are you married? Uh, no. Are you okay? Well, let me, let me, let me, do, do you understand it? Do you understand it first? You don't understand it, bro. What is it? Okay. No, no. If you understand, just explain to me what the verse is saying. Getting a fight and someone like, yeah. Yeah, you don't understand it. So, if, so just say you don't understand it. Okay. You get in a fight with somebody. Your wife wants to help you, wants to protect you from getting beat up, right? So she jumps and she hits the man in the genitals. Okay. You have to cut off her hand for protecting her husband. And you cannot have pity, you cannot feel bad for her. This is this is your God? No, there are some verses uh, like uh -huh. in the Old Testament. That right. were but they're from God. Okay. So you believe this is from God? There were some like rules made by... A woman's hand should be cut off for protecting her husband. Yeah, they were like... Uh, yeah, that, that's God's laws for you. This is God's laws. So when I find things in the Bible, I cannot believe are from God because I find them not just at all. I find them disgusting. You cut off a woman's hand for just trying to help her husband and not pity her.
I'm saying this is not this is not a God that is just. Show me. I don't want to nitpick your religion. I'm not. I'm not nitpicking. I'm saying this is not. Are. This is not a God because that is just. Not read the entire I have. Thing. Oh, again, you just you assume something about me, right? Okay. I. You don't know me. Don't. And your eyes shall not pity her. Okay. Do you understand the context there? Two men get in a fight. The wife of one tries to help her husband. You have to cut off her hand, and you can't pity her. You think that's just? But you seeing the pattern I was saying earlier, you see how all is pointing to Jesus? Yeah. Okay, now, yeah. let's talk about the cutting of the hand. Let me go a little deeper to show you. Though on the surface level, it sounds horrific, like it did to all of us. Let's just go a little deeper and s explain it from the perspective of the biblical worldview. I mean, in other words, like I can enter the Quran's worldview and not believe in the Quran. And I can tell you from the Quran, this is what it says, even though I don't believe it. Likewise, though you're not a believer, first at least enter the worldview of the Bible and see it from their perspective, why it seems logical to them, even though you may reject it. So let's go to Deuteronomy 25, 11 and 12. Let me show you that passage. <clears throat> Deuteronomy? 25, because this is the passage that her mentor mentioned about cutting off of the hand. Because earlier okay. she was talking about her mentor and Deuteronomy 25, 11 and 12. She didn't give the reference, but that's what she's referring to, because this is the only reference to cutting off the hand. <clears throat> okay, so should I start with one or yeah. 11, 12? 11 or 12, dude. What's one going to do with it? That's Sorry, what brother. What I mean. <laughs> if two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue her husband from his assailant and she okay, reaches attacker. attacker and she reaches yeah. out and seizes him by his private part, you shall cut off the hand, show her no pity. Now, just reading it sounds cruel, but let me now explain to you from the perspective of biblical <clears throat> worldview. Number one, if you read Exodus all the way to Deuteronomy, we are told, whether it's fantasy or not, irrelevant, at least in the narrative, that God appeared visibly in a pillar of cloud in full view of the Egyptians and the Israelites. And that pillar of cloud appeared as a pillar of fire by night, by which the Israelites could see in the darkness. So God appeared miraculously to Israel and Egypt, and then he brought plagues that they witnessed. So God gave, in the narrative, proof, I'm God, I am real, here I am. And then it even says that God spoke from the mountain audibly, and they heard God's voice audibly. And they were so afraid from the voice, they begged Moses, Moses, please, don't let us see God or hear God anymore. You speak, because we can't handle his voice. And just to prove it to you, go to Exodus 19, brother. And read verses 9 to 25. <clears throat> because I'm going to explain it in the context of the writer. See why this makes sense. What this woman did was a travesty. I'll show you in a minute. But we got to go through it slowly. Yes, now, brother. Exodus 19, 9 to 25. Verses 9 to 25. Read slowly. Who appears and who sees him and hears him? The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to come to you in the dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told Lord, the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and concentrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day because on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them, be careful that you do not approach the mountain or touch the foot for it, of it. 
whoever touches the mountain is to be put to death they are to be stoned or shot with arrow not a hand is to be laid on them no person or animal shall be permitted to live only when the ram's horn sound a long blast may they approach the mountain after moses has gone down the mountain to the people he cons he cons them. consecrated them yeah he consecrated them and they washed their clothes then he said to the people prepare yourself for the third day abstain from sexual relations on the morning of the third day there was thunder and lightning now notice sister they're seeing this now they're seeing something visible they see thunder they hear thunder they see lightning they hear lightning and they see a thick cloud that comes on the mountain so notice what's happening here keep on and a very loud trumpet blast everyone in the camp trembled then moses led the people out of the camp to meet with god and they stood at the foot of the mountain mount sinai was covered with smoke because the lord descended on it in fire the smoke billowed up from it like smoke from furnace and the whole mountain trembled violently as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder moses spoke and the voice of the god answered him the lord descended to the top of the mount sinai and called moses to the top of the mountain so moses went up and the lord said to him go down and warn them warn the people so they do not force their way through to see the lord and may many of them perish even the priest who approach the lord must consecrate themselves yeah, or set apart themselves. Yep. set apart consecrate themselves or the lord will break out against them moses said to the lord the people cannot come up mount sinai because you yourself warned us put limits around the mountain and set it apart as holy the lord replied go down and bring aaron up with you but the priests and the people must not force their way through to come up to the lord or he will break out against them so moses went down to the people and told them now again to explain what you read it was long but we had to go through it so i can make my point the people see a thick cloud visibly come down on mount sinai in front of their eyes they see and hear thunder lightning and they hear a trumpet and then they hear god's voice audibly this is a whole multitude of people seeing this now whether it happened or not that's not relevant to my point my point is in the narrative this happened now go to exodus 20 so i can tie it in exodus 20 next chapter just read the first three verses 19 and comes 20 and the god spoke all these words i am the lord your god who brought you out of egypt out of the land of slavery you shall have no other god before me now what god is saying to them here is i am the god who came down to save you from your oppression from the tyranny to make you my possession on earth therefore because i fought for you and i saved you from this tyrant this hitler you belong to me therefore you have to now only follow me because no other god did what i did for you i did my part i saved you now you respond by now honoring me so go to 18 same chapter 18 now notice what the people say when they hear god speak audibly they're hearing his voice 18 to 23 same chapter exodus 20 18 to 23 when the people saw the thunder and the lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke they trembled with fear they stayed at a distance and said to moses speak to us yourself and we will listen but do not have god speak to us or we will die moses said to the people do not be afraid god has come to test you so that the fear of god will be with you to keep you from sinning now notice the why he appeared notice what he's saying i appeared so you know i am god i am real i'm not fantasy so that you know i am god you know i'm going to judge you so you don't sin and spread evil and corruption this is my way of constraining you from corrupting the earth and spreading evil and immorality and oppression see why god did it to constrain them because if you see god you see god and god makes himself real to you now you know there is a god it's not atheism it's not naturalism and if there is a god then he owns me and i have a right to live according to his dictates so now let me ask you a question in light of this 
If after you saw God like they did, let's assume it's real. You saw God like they did. And you went ahead and then defied him anyway after what he did. Would you deserve judgment for now defying God after God shows up and saves you from oppression and provides for you and shows that he's real? And you hear his voice saying, now I expect you to do it this way because I don't want you to spread sin. But if you go ahead and sin anyway, would you then deserve the judgment that God brings on you? Yeah. <laughs> Good. You're being honest. In light of that, now let's read Deuteronomy 25, 11 to 12. Now let's read. Now, you see, I told you if you read it in its context, it all makes sense. It's the problem is people take snippets to make it look bad and not read in context. And your eyes shall not pity her. Do you understand the context there? Two men get in a fight. The wife of one tries to help her husband. You have to cut off her hand and you can't pity her. You think that's just. Right? And puts out her hand and seizes the man attacking by the, by the genitals. You shall cut off her hand. Your eye shall not pity her. You think this is from God? If, if a man gets in a fight with another man, are you married? Uh, no. Are you okay? Well, let me, let me, let me, do, do you understand it? Yeah. Do you understand it first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't understand it, bro. I do understand. What is it? Okay. No, no. If you understand, just explain to me what the verse is saying. I told you if you read it in its context, it all makes sense. It's the problem is people take snippets to make it look bad and not read in context. So I read the way, context. Ex Exodus came first. FYI. Yeah. Deuteronomy 25, 11 and 12. Now, God has shown himself to his people. They've heard his voice. They've seen the cloud. He's now proven to them, I am real. Therefore, here's the do's and don'ts. Now, why is it that God says their hand must be cut off? Because I want you to now read very attentively. If you read the Old Testament, one of the most important things for the perpetuity of a man for his line to continue was to have seed. Because the way you continue your tribe your lineage your clan is through offspring it was considered a curse in the bible that if a person couldn't have a child he was cursed because that means his line would end his name would end his line would not continue right you you with me there sister yeah according to the bible now understand why god says her hand should be cut off because notice it says she maliciously reached for the private part see right there you should ask yourself why is God saying that if two men fight and my wife comes and reaches out for the private part? See, you're nodding here. Now you're seeing she was maliciously aiming that area for what reason? Yeah, I get you what you mean now. I know. Yes. She was trying to crush his private parts in order to hinder him from having seed, thereby cutting off his line. Hmm. You see why it's wicked now? And God said, now do this to teach them a lesson. Because it's not just she hit him in the face. Notice he didn't say if she hits him in the face, cut off his hand. Hmm. If she kids him in the shin, cut off his hand. It's deliberate. She aimed for the genitalia to damage the genitalia so he cannot have children to cut off his line, which is worse than murder when you cut off my entire seed. Yeah. So yeah. in line of her malicious attack, it's malicious. She directed it there deliberately. In light of them knowing God is real and God shows up, and in light of knowing how important it is to continue your seed, in light of all those, this command doesn't seem as harsh at, as at first glance because she deserves what she gets. Yeah, now I can see what you mean. When you say it like that, okay. Um, it also means that one should read it very carefully, the Bible. Yeah, I mean, you understand, yeah. Jesus? Then all of the Old Testament comes to life. Now you're going, oh, wow. I can't. Then it makes sense because Jesus said, all of it was pointing to me. You have to find me everywhere when you read it. You have to find me and why hmm. priests are, are physically unblemished. You have to find me on why animals are unblemished. You have to find me in the story of circumcision. You have to find me and Abraham willing to offer up his son Isaac because it's all about me. So find me in all these stories because it's meant to bring you to me. I've actually not just read the Bible multiple times, I've actually studied it with Christians. So don't assume things about me. I'm not, I'm not nitpicking. I'm saying this is, not, this is not a God that is just. I have. Oh, again, you just, you assume something about me, right? I, you don't know me.
has uh, Sirach, has Barak, has the first Maccabees, has the second Maccabees, has chapter 10 through 16 of Easter, 324 through 90, Daniel 13, the story uh, of uh, Suzanaha, and Daniel Suzanaha. Now, is Solomon also the son of God? If we go through the Bible, the book of Palms. In the book of Palms 2. You know what? I learned something from this man. <clears throat> I did not know that God had revealed the book of Palms. Did you guys know that? I just learned something from him. God revealed the book of Palms along with the book of Psalms. Okay? I really am thankful for this man. I did not know there was extra revelation that he discovered inspired by God called the Book of Palms. I knew about Psalms, but I didn't know about Palms. Next, we're going to learn that God also inspired the Book of Heels, the Book of Shins, the Book of Toes, the Book of Fingers, the Book of Nostrils. Amazing. What would Christianity do without Uthman Farooq? Yeah, armpits too, yeah. What would Christianity do without Uthman Farooq? Informing us that God revealed the Book of Palms along with Psalms. Keep that in mind. I'm not, I'm not nitpicking. I'm saying this is not, this is not a God because that is just. Not read the entire I have. Oh, again, you just, you assume something about me, right? Okay. I, you don't know me. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've actually not just read the Bible multiple times. Okay. I've actually studied it with Christians. Okay. So don't assume things about me. I, I, I used to be okay. amongst Christians. I'm not saying I was a Christian, but I was raised amongst all my friends were Christian. None of them were Muslim. And I used to go to Bible studies okay. twice a week. Were you a Muslim then? No, my, my family was Muslim, but, I, but they were all secularists, right? I had a base belief of being a Muslim, but I didn't pray five times a day, I didn't, I didn't practice, so I was open. So I, I didn't used to go to a mosque, I used to go to a church. And I studied this Bible cover to cover in a Wednesday youth group Horizon. You know where Horizon's at? Off of Balboa and Genesee. So, so don't assume things about me, okay? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not nitpicking. I'm saying this is not, are. this is not a God because that is just. Not read the entire I have. Oh, again, you just, you assume something about me, right? Okay. I, you don't know me. Don't. Believe it or not, I've actually not just read the Bible multiple times. Okay. I've actually studied it with Christians. Okay. So don't assume things about me. Has uh, Sirach, has Barak, has the first Maccabees, has the second Maccabees, has chapter 10 through 16 of Easter, Daniel 324 through 90, Daniel 13, the story uh, of uh, Suzanaha, and Daniel Suzanaha. Daniel Believe it or not, 
I've actually not just read the Bible multiple times, I've actually studied it with Christians. So don't assume things about me. I, I, I used to be amongst Christians. I'm not saying I was a Christian, but I was raised amongst all my friends were Christian. None of them were Muslim. And I used to do Bible studies twice a week. Were you a Muslim then? No. My, my family was Muslim, but, I, but they were all seculars, right? I had a base belief of being a Muslim, but I didn't pray five times a day. I didn't, I didn't practice, so I was open. So I, I didn't used to go to a mosque, I used to go to a church. And I, and I studied this Bible cover to cover. Crook! Well, are you a crook? You are a crook. You are a crook. And you are a fraudster. And we will call every, each and every single one of you out. Well, he will call you out and we will catch you. Because part of our da'wah is not just to find the disbelievers, the disbelievers who are a'da, the enemy is disbelievers, but also to find the munafiqun of the ummah, that they're creeping around, pretending to be Muslims. You're finished. You're finished. You're finished. You're finished. Wallahi, you're finished. Wallahi, you're finished. Believe it or not, I've actually not just read the Bible multiple times, I've actually studied it with Christians. Don't ever come out, any, any retraction you do now, Switch off your social media. I don't want to see your face. I don't want to hear your voice. Wallahi. Wallahi. You're a crook and a fraudster. What the hell is this? A'udhu Billah. We have seen the evidence. You cannot escape anymore. You're finished. A'udhu Billah. Everyone will unfollow you now. You're out of a job, boy. You're out of a job, boy. You're out of a job, boy. Glory to the Triune God. Don't you understand, my brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ? Muhammad has already defended and proven the Bible for you. Since they believe in Muhammad, not you, not me, that means whether they like it or not, they have to accept what Muhammad said. Otherwise, they're not a Muslim. Say that Muhammad is a son of the devil and spit on him, then I won't appeal to Muhammad. You got it now? So they want to say, okay, I'm not a Muslim. Muhammad is a bastard, son of the devil. Then I can answer your questions. But as long as you confess to be a Muslim, as long as you say you believe in the Quran, which is worse than toilet paper and the Sunnah, right? Which is worse than a plunger. Then you have no right and no audacity to even Question the Old Testament or the New Testament because your fake prophet and your fake God confirm that my Bible is the uncorrupt, perfectly preserved Word of God. You're stuck with it. Perfect. and puts out her hand and seizes the man attacking by the, by the genitals. You shall cut off her hand, your eyes shall not pity her. You think this is from God? Become a Muslim. Ashhadu. Come on, bro. Don't be, don't be just stubborn because you want to be stubborn. May Allah guide you. May Allah not guide you? <laughs> well, he, he guides and misguides. So. Yeah. May Allah guide you. I'm making dua for you. Like, say Ameen. Huh? Did you say may Allah misguide me? No. You say like uh, God misguide and God. I'm saying may Allah guide you. Say Ameen.